we've been talking quite a bit about categorical syllogisms and we've given examples, given you the rules, but there are a couple other syllogisms that are also very important to philosophy, logic, theology, developing arguments. And a couple of those are the disjunctive syllogism and the hypothetical syllogism. And I'll, I'm going to share those with you uh, briefly here. The rule for a disjunctive syllogism is that it must contain in the premises a denial of one alternative while the conclusion affirms the other. So the form is either X or Y, not X, therefore Y. And make sure you're not saying X, therefore not Y. Make sure the second premise is a denial of one of the options. So for example, either Joe went to Walmart or he went to Kroger. He didn't go to Walmart, therefore Joe went to Kroger. That's a valid example. Another good example, either the Bible came from God or it came from the devil. The Bible didn't come from the devil, therefore the Bible came from God. And just remember the rule, you deny one of the options in the second premise and then accept, affirm the other option in the conclusion. So that's the, disjunct the disjunctive syllogism. And then there's the hypothetical syllogism. And technically, the, the form that I'm going to share with you is the mixed hypothetical syllogism. And that's what this is. If P, then Q, P, therefore Q. The P is called the antecedent. The Q is called the consequence. And what we're doing is affirming the antecedent and then affirming the consequence. But we can also reverse this. But in this case, the example I have here is if Jesus rose from the dead, he is the son of God. Jesus did rise from the dead, therefore what? What's the conclusion? That he is the son of God. So that's what I've done here is I've, I've affirmed, affirmed the antecedent and therefore in my conclusion, I am affirming the consequence. You could also do this. You could say, if P then Q, not Q, therefore not P. I can deny the consequence in the second premise and then in my conclusion, deny the, the antecedent. So for example, if Jesus rose from the dead, he is the son of God. Jesus is not the son of God, which of course we know that's not true, but if that was the premise, then the conclusion could be validly that Jesus did not rise from the dead, right? Because if, if Jesus did rise from the, dead, from the dead, he is the son of God. So if he's not the son of God, then we know that he did not rise from the dead. That's logical. That's valid. But here's a fallacy. Because I, I can affirm the antecedent or deny the consequence and come to a good conclusion. But what I can't do in that second premise is affirm the consequence or deny the antecedent. Okay, so the first fallacy is affirming the, the consequence by doing this. If P, then Q. Q, therefore P. I can't do that. Uh, so, for example, I'm going to show you why this, this can't work. If Joe does all his work, he will pass the class. Okay? That's, 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 that's the first premise. But what if I said, Joe passed the class? That would be affirming the consequence there, affirming Q. And then, then I could conclude, according to the fallacy, therefore Joe did all his work because I'm affirming the consequence and then going back to the antecedent to affirm that. But the problem is, I didn't say that the only way that Joe's going to pass the class is to do all his work. I'm just saying, if Joe does all his work, he will pass the class. Maybe I'm a nice guy. Maybe I allowed him to pass the class 
even though he didn't do all his work. So I can't conclude, or you can't conclude, that just because Joe passed the class that he did all his work, even though I said, maybe I said it publicly, that if Joe does all his work, he will pass the class. Maybe he passed anyway, okay? So what you can't do is affirm the consequence in a hypothetical syllogism for the second premise. The fallacy two is denying the antecedent. So what this would look like is, if P then Q, not P, therefore not Q. So for example, if Joe does all his work, he will pass the class. Joe didn't do all his work, so I'm denying the, the antecedent there. Well, what's the conclusion? Therefore, Joe didn't pass the class. Well, again, maybe I allowed him to pass the class anyway. So it would be a fallacy to conclude just because he didn't do all his work that he did not pass the class. If I said the only way that John can pass the class if he does all of his work, then you could come to that conclusion. All right, let me give you an, another example. Okay, this is, this is an example that, this is actually the argument that William Lane Craig uses for the argument from, from morality to prove the existence of God. If God does not exist, objective morality does not exist. Objective morality exists, therefore God exists. Is that a valid argument? Yeah. What it's doing is denying the consequence, saying the opposite of the consequence. So don't, don't let it f trick you because you have both phrases in the first premise being in a negative form, right? It's, they're, they're, it, if God does not exist, morality does not exist. So what, how, you, how you deny the consequence is to make it the opposite. And so what you're really what you're doing is you're affirming the fact that objective morality exists. And so if you af affirm the fact that objective morality exists, you are denying the consequence there, and therefore you can deny the antecedent, which is the opposite of God not existing, and you're concluding that God exists. So if God does not exist, objective morality does not exist, objective morality does exist, and we can, we can prove that, therefore, God does exist. Okay, see that? If you said, if objective morality exists, then God exists, God does not exist, therefore, objective morality does not exist. You're, you're doing, you're doing this, the same thing. You're, you're denying the consequence, and therefore, you're able to deny the antecedent. Of course, we don't agree with that second premise, and therefore we don't agree with the conclusion, but that would be a valid form. That would be a valid argument. But let's, let's turn this around and do one more example of hypothetical syllogism, and, and that's this. If objective morality exists, then God exists. Objective morality exists, therefore God exists. Okay, very simple. I've actually used that, that form of the same thing. It, it, it looks a little bit easier to grasp than the, the ones that have the negatives in that. Uh, but uh, either way, you end up with the same conclusion. And that's a discussion of hypothetical syllogisms, disjunctive syllogisms, to add to our other discussion of categorical syllogisms. And I hope you understand all of those by now.